Hello friends, welcome to Cryptonomics. This is our last episode of the year, year-end review of the markets and our portfolio. Today we will discuss crypto markets, how they ended the year, how they ended the last days, how our portfolio did, the stock market, mostly S&P 500, and how our portfolio and returns compare to the benchmarks. If you want to learn more about investing and how to beat the benchmarks, Stay tuned, subscribe, and follow for more alpha. Looking at the crypto markets first, we can see that the Bitcoin is down 1.3%. Ethereum is down 2.4%, hanging at about 2,300, Bitcoin at 4,200, and Solana at about 100. Those are the top three cryptos that are doing their thing as the year comes to an end. We are excited to see what happens to Bitcoin starting early January after the BTC spot ETF gets approved. Expectations are between the January 5th and the 10th that the SEC will approve probably all the spot ETF applications at once, not to play favorites or give anybody a head start. Interesting thing to note is that ARK Investments ETF ran by Kathy Wood, sold all their GBTC shares and converted them to another ETF. This is because they are launching their own ETF and they didn't want to give any of their allocation to a competitor. This has actually impacted the discount value of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in an interesting way. As we mentioned in a previous video, the Grayscale Ethereum Trust had a discount of 14%. That had dropped down to 7 but now it's back to 10 leaving what we consider the best trade in crypto still available, which is buying Ethereum Grayscale Trust at a 10% discount to current market price and then capturing that discount once the spot ETF gets approved, sometimes in, in probably early or late summer of next year. So, it is a way to purchase Ethereum 10% cheaper than what it costs right now. That is free 10% gains on top of very likely appreciation of Ethereum because it will get its own spot ETF allowing traditional investors to buy, uh, buy Ethereum through a different investment vehicle in their 401ks. Now, as we can see here, Bitcoin is up 156% for the year. Ethereum, 92. Solana, 937%. Those are insane returns. There is no stock that you could have bought that would have gotten these returns. Perhaps some small microcap biotech that cured cancer yesterday, but those are very hard to find. Solana is one of top 10 projects in crypto that you easily could have bought if you just allocated a basket to the top 10. You could have captured 942% returns. Other cryptos that are well known, like Cardano is up 147%, Avalanche 267%, Polkadot 90, Chainlink 174, Uniswap 45, Cosmos 15%, Optimism 302%, Immutable 490%. Lido, 190%. Arbitrum is down 87%. We will do an episode on Arbitrum specifically next year. We have an amazing trade when it comes to Arbitrum. It's not what you think, so stay tuned. And if you have Arbitrum, definitely pay attention because you might want to sell this one. Celestia is up 473%. This is one of our airdrop hunts that we're doing. Check out our video for how to farm the Celestia airdrop. Thor, Thor Chain Rune is up 300%. This is also one of our new allocations. And we do not have anything further down the stack. Of the risk curve but let's just check out bonk because bonk is bonkers seven thousand percent up only crypto people only crypto this is it's hard to get these kinds of returns in stocks 
and that's why we are involved in crypto. Now let's check out the crypto bubbles. If you haven't seen this, this is a cool little website called CryptoBubbles.net where the, the market cap and the returns are represented with bubbles of various sizes. So bigger the bubble, bigger the market cap it, it has. So as you can see here, this is relative in ETH terms. So relative to ETH, Bitcoin has outperformed Ethereum by 33%. Solana has outperformed Ethereum by 450%. The reason we are pricing things in Ethereum here is because Ethereum is our unit of account. It is the biggest allocation in our crypto portfolio, and that is what we benchmark everything else to. You can also do this by going to the right here and denominating it in BTC. So if you do it in BTC terms, then Bitcoin will be zero, and then Ethereum is, has on underperformed by 24%. Solana has outperformed Bitcoin by 300% and so on. So when looking at your crypto returns, it is maybe tempting to look at the returns in terms of US dollars because that is your mental unit of account. But when you get deep into crypto, in the weeds of the things, you do not denominate things in dollar terms anymore. You're not trying to make more dollars. You're trying to make more Bitcoin. You're trying to make more Ethereum. You're trying to make more Sol or whatever your biggest allocation is. You will make some investment, some trades perhaps, some swing trades. Maybe you're staking. Maybe you are mining particular crypto and you're trying to make more of that. You're trying to make more Bitcoins. Why? Because Bitcoins will outperform dollars. We try to make more Ether. Why? Because Ethereum will outperform dollars. Not because it is this amazing new thing. It will outperform it just simply because dollars are being printed ad infinitum. They will always, it, it is dividing a finite over an infinite. Okay. How do you calculate the price of a Bitcoin? Well, you take all the dollars right, which is infinity symbol, divided by 21 million, which gives you a price per Bitcoin, which is also infinite, right? It's infinity divided by 21 million. In case of Ethereum, it's infinity divided by 120 million, but Ethereum is deflationary. The 120 million is expected to trend down over time because of EIP-1559, which has a burn mechanism in Ethereum, making it ultrasound money. Means that more Ethereum gets used, more of it gets burned, than gets created. So it is deflationary. One aspect of the top cryptos that I want you to pay attention to is what is their supply, circulating supply? So Bitcoin right now is 19 and a half million with the absolute cap of 21 million. Ethereum is 120 million. There is no absolute cap, but the mechanism that is currently enacted in Ethereum makes it deflationary. So this is expected to trend down over time. Solana is 500 million almost with an infinite supply and inflation of seven and a half percent. So when figuring out how much a coin should be worth, you take the market cap, which is right here, divided by outstanding supply, and that's what gets you the price per coin. When you hear a ridiculous amount for a XRP, when it goes to people say $10, $10 per coin, right, right, 60 cents now, it would be taking $10 times 54 billion, but the actual supply is 100 billion, right? So that's, what is it? 10 trillion that's not that's not a likely number for for XRP it's already large enough a 33 billion market cap for a centralized banker coin not trying to shit on any one project just XRP doesn't belong in the top 10 all right so looking at crypto bubbles we can see that Ethereum could have done better relative to others, but in absolute terms, Ethereum is not bad, holding at 92%.
Since Ethereum has underperformed both Bitcoin, Solana, and several others down the stack, we think that 2024 will be a year of Ethereum because it will catch up. It has the most developers, it has the most apps, it has the best unit economics, also known as tokenomics, in its ecosystem. It is deflationary, and Ethereum has never been deflationary during a bull market. So, what other coins do we think have a promising future in 2024? Well, Solana has been showing a lot of vitality lately, a lot of excitement following their airdrops and DeFi, but we think this might not be as long lived as expected because people are just going where the airdrops are. And once the airdrops are gone, they will probably go where there's most applications, which is Ethereum. Next one that we think it should appreciate more in 2024 is Uniswap. Uniswap has only gone 45%. But it is the biggest decentralized exchange, and we think it, it deserves to capture more value. Immutable is a blockchain for gaming, we think has a promising future and might see more appreciation, even though it's up already 500% for the year. Next one is Lido. Lido is the biggest liquid staking derivative for Ethereum. It is up only 17%, uh, sorry, it is up only 189% for, for the year at two and a half billion. We think it deserves to capture more value given how much revenue it generates from staking rewards. And the last one we think has a lot of value here is Torchain Rune because it provides cross-chain swaps, a ways to earn and borrow Borrow interest-free, which we made a video, check it out. If you want to uh, get some cash and you have a lot of crypto, but you don't want to sell because there's a bull market approaching, why would you sell? There's a way to borrow with 0% interest, with no liquidation risk and no expiration on, on ThorSwap using the ThorChain. We expect a lot from ThorChain because it provides cross-chain swaps that are quite unique in crypto space and as there becomes a greater need for interoperability between chains yes there are chains like polkadot that aims to specialize in this but as far as DeFi and uh, swapping assets to native assets cross chain thor swap and rune the thor chain is the premier spot and the only ones that are doing that currently Next up, we are going to discuss the stock market, mostly the S&P 500 and our portfolio and our holdings. The market closed, mixed bag on the last day. The reason you see a lot of red in, uh, in the stock market on the last day is something called tax loss harvesting. This is where you may have a loser in your portfolio and what you can do is sell it because you think you don't want to hold on to it and you want to sell it to uh, break against any gains you may have on your winners. So let's say you had a thousand dollars of gains in your portfolio that you already realized. Let's say you sold some Tesla or Nvidia that went up a lot because you took some profit. Well, now you might have to pay taxes on those thousand dollars. So if you have a loser that also lost a thousand dollars and you don't plan to hold on to it, it's good time to sell it that will counter your gains and then your realized gains will be zero on your taxes. You won't pay any taxes. Also, if you plan to get rid of it any, anyways and you plan to have profits next year, you can carry that over as well. Talk to your tax uh, accountant about these things specifically, but that's why you often see a lot of red on the last few days of the year because investors are tax loss harvesting. They're getting rid of their losers in order to benefit from a tax for tax purposes. Now, it's been a stellar year for the Magnificent Seven in the S&P 500. We can see that Microsoft is up 56%. NVIDIA, 238%. Google, 58%. Meta, 194%, Apple, 
48%. Let's see, uh, Amazon, 80%. Where is Tesla? Tesla, 101%. So those are the Magnificent Seven that were responsible for 70% of S&P 500 returns. The S&P 500, I believe, finished the year up 24% for the year. Now, let's see how this compares to what we did. This is our portfolio returns. Let's move us over here. This is our various portfolios. So, Q4 was a good quarter for us, up 109% in one of our portfolios, 30 and 90. In Q4 alone, <laughs> we beat the whole year-to-date uh, year returns of S&P 500, which is the benchmark. Now, year-to-date, our portfolios are 243, 40, and 224. This is our biggest portfolio, and the reason it's up so much is because of our very concentrated allocations in, you guessed it, Coinbase. Why are we so invested in Coinbase? Because we understand crypto, and traditional finance doesn't understand crypto, so we have an edge. We know there's an approaching bull market, and Coinbase will do well. Traditional investors or analysts, they don't even cover Coinbase. They don't even understand how crypto works. So this is a very underappreciated equity in traditional markets. And because of our edge in crypto, we are heavily invested in Coinbase. Now, I understand that over concentration is traditionally bad and you want to diversify to, to uh, spread out your risk when it comes to portfolio allocation and uh, modern portfolio construction. I studied at UCSD with Harry Markowitz, who got the Nobel Prize for portfolio diversification in finance. I know this well, <laughs> but then diversification is a tool of somebody who doesn't understand things well. Why would I spread out my investments to 50 things that I can't possibly allocate enough attention to when I can focus my attention to maybe five things and really understand them well. Because of this focus, when, they, when you have such an edge, you can concentrate your portfolio in a high conviction. And if you have high conviction in something, it deserves more allocation in your portfolio. So Coinbase is 48% of our portfolio as of 22nd, it's actually up more than that as of now. Plus, we bought some options that are long dated for 2025 that are now 20% of our portfolio because Coinbase went up three, 400% this year. Portfolio allocation when it comes to different sectors uh, is 71% domestic, largely Coinbase. Foreign stocks is 7%. This is mostly Chinese tech stocks that are substantially down because of the Chinese regulations that we don't appreciate from their government. Seems like they're shooting themselves in the foot. So we have stopped adding to our Chinese tech sector because of the unpredictable nature of the Chinese government. We don't understand why they're shooting themselves in the foot and nerfing their own tech sector where it can't compete against US on the same level field. We are hopeful that the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, will see the day of light and will stop harassing their own industry and their own tech sector and let them run wild so they can become the best in the world they are falling behind because of centralized government trying to make decisions. This is why we like crypto, decentralization, people. All right, so these are our sectors, mostly financials, again, Coinbase. Communication services, 
our biggest position there is Meta, also known as Facebook. Uh, we believe what they did with Instagram and how they're monetizing is amazing. Their VR technology is advancing rapidly, and we believe within the next one or two generations, it'll probably uh, start hitting mainstream in, in a level that smartphones also did. And then information technology, this is mostly IT stuff, SaaS companies that we invest in. <clears throat> Lastly, let's take a look at the Grayscale Ethereum Trust discount. As we said in a previous video, we think this is the best trade right now because the discount is so large on Ethereum that once the spot ETF for Ethereum is approved, this 11, let's say 12% will be reduced to zero and you will make an additional 12% on your Ethereum. So if you were to purchase Ethereum right now, we recommend that this may be a good option to consider because of this discount. Now, the discount on Bitcoin is, it dropped down to 5%, but it went up to about 8% recently, despite the ETF likely being approved within 10 days. The reason this happened is because ARK Investments had a very large holdings, I think about 300 million of Bitcoin, uh, that they sold from the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust in order to reallocate those funds into their own ETF that would be a competitor. So they didn't want to give their competitor a head start with their own 300 million. So they probably sold, took a haircut on the discount in order to do that and reallocate to themselves because they think losing a few percentage on the discount was less valuable than jumpstarting their own ETF that will earn them more fees. For Ethereum, the discount is almost 12%. And you can see that historically, it has oscillated between uh, 50 to, to down to 7% uh, on the 27th right here. And it went back up. So as long as it's above 10%, I think it's it's not a bad decision if you were going to get Ethereum anyways to get some of this. And lastly, I wanna leave you with a preview of a video we will make shortly, which is top 10 reasons why you shouldn't listen to experts when it comes to crypto. Most of the time, it's just old men yelling at clouds and you should pay them no attention, especially, especially, if crypto is not their field of expertise, and it likely isn't if they're old. And the last thing I wanna say is Happy New Year. I hope 2024 is a prosperous year for you all. It should be a good year for crypto. Stay tuned, stay curious, dollar cost average, keep your emotions under control, have an access strategy, have a plan, stick to your plan. When things get heated up, we tend to get euphoric. It's important to be calm, collected, and stick to your plan. Don't get scammed. Be careful what you do with crypto. Get educated first. And may the force of compound interest be with you. Peace.